So welcome to our webinar on a peritoneal dialysis. My name is Anjay Rastogi, and uh, I will be going over home dialysis, especially peritoneal dialysis, in, in some detail. And I, I do have two very special guests today who I'll be introducing after I go over some slides. So the first one is our, our base slide, is our contact information. So if you have any questions about home dialysis, dialysis in general, or anything, this is our contact. You can call us directly or you can email us and also do visit our website. So this is, at this website, uh, we have our previous webinars on, on dialysis, on transplantation, on medication, high blood pressure, and a lot more that are actually archived. So today's program is on peritoneal dialysis and home dialysis. But before we get into dialysis, just a quick recap in patients with advanced kidney disease. So this slide is showing the five stages of chronic kidney disease that we call CKD. And these CKD stages are actually defined based on your GFR. So one of the things that I would definitely urge to all the audience if they have kidney disease is to know what their creatinine levels is, and from that we calculate the GFR. So GFRs are, is the single most important test that we do to assess kidney function, especially if they have chronic kidney disease. And based on the GFR, we classify patients in stage one, which is the earliest stage, and then you progress to go to stage five, that is CKD stage five. And in this stage, you will need some help, what we call replacement therapy. And we'll be talking about what options a patient has. Stage five is also called ESRD, and stage renal disease. And that's a term that you probably have, have read about as well. So if you or if someone that you love or know has, has advanced kidney disease stage five, the question comes up, what are the options that they have? And these options are listed over here. One option is dialysis, which we'll be going over in a lot more detail. The other option is transplant, which I do want to uh, touch on briefly. So if you do have advanced kidney disease, you, there are, you, know, you can either get listed for, for what we call the cadaveric uh, um, kidney transplant, or if you have a living donor, um, then you can even get a preemptive transplant. That means that you get a kidney transplant even before you go on dialysis. But if you don't have a living donor and you get listed, the chances of you getting a transplant before um, uh, before dialysis is is very low because the waiting time is is long. But but you should definitely get listed uh, and keep looking for for uh, living donors uh, if there are any potential donors. And if there's any way we can help from the UCLA core kidney program, uh, feel free to reach out to us. And the other option that I've listed over here is is uh, palliative care. So there are our condition, and this is something that your nephrologist and and care team will need to discuss with you, um, that if they don't think the transplant and dialysis are best options for you, then there is also palliative care. And UCLA has a very big palliative program as well. But today we'll be talking more about, about dialysis and we'll be talking about, about in-center versus home dialysis. So normally when, 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 when people think about dialysis, they, they know about dialysis units that you probably see uh, on the roads when you're driving and you go there, get dialyzed three times a week and then go home. And that's what we call in-center hemodialysis. But our focus today is gonna to be home dialysis and more specifically, we'll be looking at peritoneal dialysis. But the peritoneal dialysis is when you get dialyzed at home and, and you do through your own body cavity called, called the peritoneal cavity. There's also uh, what we call hemodialysis, in which you get it, put a dialysis access in your, in your blood uh, vessels, and you draw the blood out and clean it up, and then you put the blood back in. So that's what we call hemodialysis. But in peritoneal dialysis, we don't access the blood. And I think this is one of the key advantages uh, of peritoneal dialysis is that they preserve. So if you are, have advanced kidney disease and, and you have, um, are getting close to dialysis or on dialysis or even transplant, there's one thing that I always educate my patients is about, about vein preservation, blood vessels, because this is the lifeline. And, and if you think about that, there are blood draws, there's a lot of other things that we do. Um, they can over time damage your, your blood vessels. So one of the advantages of peritoneal dialysis as opposed to hemodialysis is that we don't access your veins. So a key point to take home for any patient with CKD is vein preservation, and that's really done through peritoneal dialysis. So we'll be focusing today on peritoneal dialysis and its role. So this is, this is so um, going over the, our spectrum, so you could be a patient in the clinic, you're not on dialysis yet or getting close, or, and when I say you, it's not just you, it could be your loved ones or people that you know. So that's chronic kidney disease, the CKD clinics. Uh, then we, we have what we call, you might be on, on in-center hemodialysis. 
um, that means you're getting dialyzed um, at home uh, or at, in the center. Um, and the third one is you're actually in the hospital, um, ended up in the hospital for whatever reason, and um, and and you know you need dialysis as, as a life-saving modality. So all of these things lead into what we call home dialysis. So all of these patients are potential candidates to be getting dialysis at home. And then the other thing that, that I want to show here is transplantation. So so what the way I look at is home dialysis, and this is a bridge over here. Home dialysis is 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 a bridge to to transplantation. And and that should be the eventual goal. Now some patients are not candidates for, for transplantation, that's completely fine. But most of the patients are and, and at the end in majority of cases transplantation is the best option or best modality and home dialysis is, is a close second. So if you are in the clinic patient or you're in center hemodialysis going to or in the hospital or if some of the one that you know is there, consider home dialysis and explore that option. Now this is what we call the integrated dialysis care. Um, we work very closely with other teams. We work closely with the hospital. We work closely with the surgical teams, the transplant teams, dietitians, social workers, and this is what we call the, the, the dialysis team. So you'll have a whole team taking care of you to make sure that we provide the best care we can to you. And this is what, what uh, a PD uh, or pregnant dialysis will look like. This is your internal own. So you we use your own body cavity, the peritoneal cavity, to, to clear your body, to offer waste and toxic products. And this is the catheter that will, will be uh, coming out. So it's, instead of going into your blood, this goes into a peritoneal cavity. And, and this is something that can be relatively easily placed and also removed if needed. And this is the, the dialysis machine. And as you can see, it's, it's fairly small and people can travel with this machine. And we'll be going in that too, is travel on, on or, or if you want to travel, on dialysis. So with that, um, I would now like to introduce two of my, my guests, very special guests. So first on, on my right hand side is Sue Lang, and then I think you've seen Mary Beth uh, quite a bit on, on these webinars. So with that, um, Sue, do you want to give a bit of introduction who you are and uh, why you're here? <laughs> yeah. um, my name is Sue, and I was a PD patient for about six years. And, and when did you start uh, dialysis? I started dialysis um, in no, November of 2012. 2012. And um, were you ever on, on hemodialysis? Yes. And for, for how long were you in hemodialysis? Exactly six weeks. Exactly six weeks. Okay, so <laughs> she remembers exactly how long she was on, on hemodialysis. So six weeks. Thank you so much. And, and Mary Beth? I was uh, diagnosed with end-stage renal failure in 2012. And um, I um, began my first uh, round at, of treatment was I learned about uh, peritoneal dialysis. I wasn't aware of it before, but I learned about it. Right. And then you were, for a short time, you were on hemodialysis as well? Yes, very short. Very yes. short time. Very okay, short so time. very short time. So, mm -hmm. so now I just want to bring this up because uh, you don't have to go through hemodialysis to be on PD. We, we uh, you know, especially if you're getting care much early on that we prepare you to, to so you start on PD and there's also something called urgent start so even if you need dialysis right away we can put you on PD in, in a good number of cases so mm -hmm. so we won't be getting into urgent starts but PD as an option is even if you have advanced but normally we try to plan it way in advance you know mm -hmm. when your kidney function is below GFR 30 mm -hmm. we start looking into that mm -hmm. so now um, so let me talk to you about first so why why did you um, why did you pick PD as a modality for, for, for dialysis? Um, I picked PD because it, it gave me a lot of flexibility. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go back to school and knowing, knowing that when, if I were to go on to hemodialysis, mm -hmm. I would be stuck three days a week yeah. in a facility. Mm -hmm. And PD did, you know, PD allowed me to do dialysis in the comfort of my own home, right. and which also allowed me to go back to school. Cool. So I, I think that's that's one of the key things about what we call home dialysis, uh, and peritoneal dialysis is a kind of home dialysis, uh, is flexibility. So you, you get dialyzed at home, um, and you don't have to go. So when you go to in-center hemodialysis, uh, you you have shifts. So you start at 9 o'clock, end up at, at, at 1, but that's your, your time on dialysis. You have to prepare for that. You have to go there, come back, and also, so peritoneal dialysis, and, and how... 
how often do you do peritoneal dialysis? For me, it was daily. Daily. So daily, and, and was it daytime or nighttime? Nighttime, daytime. Day. I did my dialysis based on my school schedule. School schedule, okay. So, so in, in peritoneal dialysis, and I think most of the patients, what they do is they attach them, and I showed you the machine, uh, what we call the cycler. They attach themselves to the machine, and they go to bed, attach them. They get dialyzed while they're sleeping. And uh, and then they wake up. So so it saves. It's done daily, and that's another big difference. So people might say, well, it's more than than what we do in center. But there's a difference. Your kidneys work 24/7, right? Mm -hmm. And when patients go dialysis three times a week, one of the biggest complaints that I hear from patients, and and you probably have felt that too in hemo, is they feel feel very drained after those. That they feel very. So that's one of the other advantages: the energy level, right? And Mary Beth, um, uh, your energy level. So um, I, I know there was an increase, an interesting incident in when somebody asked you to sign some forms. That's right. When I was first diagnosed, I learned that there was um, there were really two options, and to me, one option of in center was I would go to a center, and they would perform dialysis on me. And when I learned about home dialysis, I was really interested in home dialysis because I would be doing, I would be responsible, I would be having more control of my life. And as Dr. Rostoki said, um, when I was first diagnosed, I remember being informed that I was 100% disabled. And I remembered uh, saying to the person who was talking to me, how much longer was that gonna take because I had to get to work. Um, I had to get to work. So really for me, I had control over my own disease with a phenomenal support system. And so I was able to work full time. Like Sue said, I worked in a school and had a daytime job, so it was perfect. I would dialyze myself at 7.30. Very quickly, you learn how to jump into bed and go to sleep and get up. And it made for me a much more normal life, knowing uh, for many people who said to me, well, how can you do that at home? You don't have people with you. I had full support. I had access to all of my physicians, everybody who was part of the core team. And along with the machine that Dr. Ostogi has said to you, was really a 24-hour support. You could call it any time if you had any questions. So it really, I felt like I had some control of my life, right. which was really important to me. I think you had a lot of control, Mary mm -hmm. Beth. <laughs> I did. <laughs> and so going back to you know flexibility and lead, living a normal life, and I think that's one of the First thing I tell patients with advanced kidney disease, lead a normal life. Mm -hmm. So it takes, first of all, it takes away the attention that you pay too much on your disease state, right? Mm -hmm. That is important, you have to take care of yourself, but at the same time, you know, it's good to focus on other things besides just your, your disease. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And you were running, you know, you're very modest, but you were running a big school, mm -hmm. you know, and, and had a lot of responsibility, and, and you were also very active. You know, I, I still remember you used to come with your running shoes on right. and, and would be running in and run out. And, well, because I think part of it is Dr. Rostogi has said and Sue has said the same thing when I mean, she was going to school full time. It was, I didn't want to become the disease. I wanted to do everything I possibly could for my own health. So this allowed me to exercise because I had more energy right. doing home dialysis because I felt better. Right. And could go to a job and feel like I was fulfilling a role that I found very fulfilling for myself and really having, you know, through UCLA and the Core Kidney Program, a tremendous amount of support right. that I was not doing this in my house alone. Right. And I think that's also very important, we'll come back to that, that you're not alone, mm -hmm. you know. And I, I, I want to get back to my, my next point about training, but just, a, just to recap a couple of points over here, one is flexibility. Mm -hmm. Um, because you're, you're not bound to, to, to the machines that you have to go. I mean, we do want to give you a schedule, mm -hmm. but some people, want, they, they want, you know, if you have something at night that you want to attend, people die as they're doing the daytime, mm -hmm. you know, attest themselves. They might break up the cycle sometime mm -hmm. as well. So there's a lot of flexibility within limits, to, to, and it's done daily. So it's very gentle on your body, and I think that's also, pay, pay, sometimes people don't realize that instead of just getting dialyzing three times 
you actually have it much more gentle. And the body likes it gentle, you know. They don't like these big shifts, you know, in mm-hmm. fluid and electrolytes. So patients in general feel better. Mm-hmm. And and it's not just that you're dialyzing the flexibility. You need the energy, like you mentioned, right? Mm-hmm. But energy to go to school. And I'll come back to that as well, because I think that's that's an important school that you went to. But running a very busy, I mean, you you were, were, were the, the head of this very busy and high-end school. Mm-hmm. And I can tell you, I mean, I've seen your students, I mean, from all age groups, it's not easy. So energy levels are also much higher. Mm-hmm. Uh, so so now you mentioned about training and support and, and a lot of people have this fear that, oh, I'm going to be dialyzing at home. So as the medical director of a dialysis unit, I can tell you that when when it's 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 something, it's not a right to be, in it, it, if I can put it that way, but it's a privilege to be at home dialysis because oh. we have to we have to actually clear you mm-hmm. that you can do because safety is a first and foremost. So you, we make sure that we give you the proper training and as long as it takes. Mm-hmm. Most of the people can be trained fairly quickly, mm-hmm. but we will not sign off till we feel that you're adequately trained and you feel adequately trained. So if you don't feel comfortable dialing at home, then, so I don't think that's ever come to me in, in my you know, uh, career that, that, that I don't feel comfortable, I can't go. They, 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 it should be relative, but training part, and this is something very important as well, that once you, you, you go PD, you need to get trained. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about the training, right? Mm-hmm. And, and so what, what drew you to the Century City, you know, the Century City PD program that's, mm-hmm. that's linked to UCLA. Mm-hmm. So why that program as opposed to any other program that, that, you know, could have gone to? Well, you know, looking back at that, as I talked to you, I remember reading like we read too much online, I had read about uh, this form of dialyzing and really wanted to do it. And then I read about the intensive training. And of course, it's presented in a way that it's a serious training and you have to feel confident. And and Dr. Rostogi, you're going to be signed off. And I saw the schedule. And once again, Century City, I was working full time and I will never forget it. I'm like, I can't take off a month to come by and get trained. And I remember at Century City, the extraordinary Joe, who trains people at Century City, said to me, well, what time would be good? And I said, well, 5 o'clock would be great. And he said, okay, 5, we'll do it at 5 o'clock. Yeah. And he met uh, he met me along with my husband so uh, we could have uh, a support system in place. It was very nice for me. And I found a real balance in the training of, I really, the, I got confidence because he gave me confidence and gave me hope that you can do that was very careful about it right. and was I was not going to be released to do it until everybody really felt confident and when I began it when I actually became time to do it at home I was very confident that I could do this and I was also confident I had a support system in place that I could call and I look at the four and a half years that I did this at home and felt like, you know, I always had support. It gave me a chance to live my life. And it also put me that, it definitely put me, PD put me, that I really, ultimately, I had UCLA, I had the core, I had the experts, I had other people to talk to, but I was responsible for my right. own health, and right. I was making decisions, right. which I think is yeah. really important. Right, right. And I, and I think, and as, as you mentioned, you know, the training program is also flexible. You know, we, we work with the patients, so we want people to work, we want them to go to school, and we don't want to interfere. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, and I think I mentioned that when you were training, is this is a very important side. It's easy, it's, I haven't seen anybody who is not, who has failed training, let me put it this way. Uh, nobody has failed it. Some t- people are very quick learners, the two of you are. Some people take a bit longer. They, it's a comfort level, mm-hmm. but nobody, and we, it's also flexible. Sometimes they can come for two hours, sometimes they can come for four hours. And we work with the schedule of the, and you mentioned Joe, and, and so what, when you, so one of the um, advice that I will have for, for anybody with advanced skin disease, so I tell my patients, when they come to see me in the clinic, outpatient clinic, they come and see me most of the time, you know? Mm-hmm. But when they come to the dialysis unit, they come to see the team. Right, mm-hmm, yes. uh, the nurse is there, the dietitian is there, the social worker. Everybody's a part of that. We call the the interdisciplinary IDTs. 
So I, said, I think it's very important that you go and visit the unit before you go there because you'll be spending actually a lot more time with the team than even with your nephrologist, mm -hmm. right? You spent time, you mentioned Joe, I mean, who's an amazing, and, and he trained you as well. Um, uh, so, so, so Joe Ifantis, who's our, our main trainer, um, an exemplary uh, human being as well. But, but that's, I think, very important that you pick the right. We have had patients coming from out of state. I mean, we have patients coming from San Diego. We have patients coming from Hawaii. We have patients from Vegas. And the question is, why would they come here? Because they feel comfortable. And I think, so So if you go to the dialysis unit, make sure that you go and visit that unit and feel comfortable. And if you don't feel comfortable, you have options of talking to the physician, you're the medical director of that unit, uh, or look for other, you know, it, it doesn't. And, and the good thing about home dialysis is that you, you and how often did you go to, once you were trained, how often was your visits, um, Sue and Mary Beth? Mm -hmm. Mine was um, um, two times a month. Two times a month. And and yours too, probably, maybe. Beth. Once again, I mean, uh, Sue, I don't know how it was for you, but the accommodation, it was twice a month. Yeah. And because I was working a full-time job, yeah. the Century City really offered that flexibility of not saying, well, you have to be here by 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Right. Uh, I would see you. We would work it out that right. I could come by and see you. And see the team, you know, when you would visit, the great part is you would see the whole team. You would right. see the social worker, yeah. would help you with this, with any insurance question, those kinds of things. Yeah. Um, there was a whole team that you could ask particular things about. That was, yeah. that was very helpful. And I would see you. And once again, that wasn't, Century City was not an, infex, an inflexible place to go. There was a, it was built in. Everybody had an attitude of working together yeah. with your schedule. Perfect, perfect. And I think that's that's also very very important. And and so once you're trained, then you can visit two times a month, depending upon some people like to come more often, mm -hmm. but we want them to come one for the labs and then for the visit with the whole team. Mm -hmm. So so that's also so you only have to have two visits as opposed to three times a week yes. for, for in center hemodialysis. So to so, so role of the team is very important, and I think I, I can't stress upon that. I mean, the dietitian, the social worker, the nurse, obviously, the training is, is, is very critical. Uh, you mentioned about exercise, you know, feeling the energy level. Now, um, so your case was, was very interesting because uh, you actually went to school while on, on, on dialysis, right? Yes. So w what kind of school did you go to? Nursing school. Very good. And what, what kind of nurse? Nursing? Uh, registered nurse. For, uh, and what's, what's your specialty? Peritoneal dialysis. Peritoneal dialysis. So Sue actually went to nursing school while on PD uh, and became a PD nurse. So a lot of times, a lot of my dialysis patients run away from dialysis units because they don't want, once they, they're transplanted, or they, but you actually took it head on and, and became a, so, so Sue is now actually a very successful PD peritoneal dialysis nurse. So that's awesome. So that's, that's great. Um, age, mm -hmm. you know. Um, you know, a lot, lot of times we are told that, that, you know, if you're over a certain age, mm -hmm. you should not be on PD. And that's mm -hmm. actually a big misconception, too. Mm -hmm. But Sue, uh, Mary Beth, you obviously right. I had a good example. That. I had heard that um, because of my age, it, previously to um, seeing the UCLA team, being part of the court team, meeting Dr. Estogia, I was told that that would be a problem. And I found out really... That was definitely not a problem. It was much more related to, um, are you a candidate? You're evaluated. Are, are you a candidate for P, uh, for PD? And is it going to work for you? So that's something that I really learned um, to get more information because I had already jumped to the conclusion that I was not going to be able to do that. And fortunately, I was evaluated to be a, a good candidate. Um, <coughs> For, P, for PD, and so as I said, you know, it really, it really changed my life. As I said, I can't focus enough on receiving, having somebody give me dialysis and doing it myself at home. It gave me much more hope, much more connection to being normal and living a normal life. Yeah. And so, so Mary Beth, you you, you mentioned about about uh, you know family support as well. And, and that's something that we really mm -hmm. um, like to stress on. And, and your husband obviously was very involved. But PD is something that you can do by yourself as Correct. well. You know, so, so I think that's something important to keep in mind. Now with home hemo at least, which is the other kind of uh, home modality, we definitely, and at least in our program, we have a partner. But for, for PD, you know, it's always good to have support. Mm 
-hmm. but um, you know you don't have have that but but we always say having the family involvement friends involvement mm -hmm. um, and also sometimes if you get tired we actually bring you back in to to the dialysis unit and you can we can do hemodialysis mm -hmm. as well over there for the short term so mm -hmm. we want to make sure that there's no burnout and we haven't seen that mm -hmm. um, the the other thing you mentioned about about age and also things that people go up on the internet and look it up and, and there's a lot of a lot of myths about PD, peritoneal dialysis, that you get infected. And you know, it's interesting on, on, on this internet, they, they have one case that, that went wrong. Um, so what I can tell you is, and these are two examples, but if you look at our, it's, it's overall, it's a very safe procedure. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously things can go wrong and we, that's where education comes in, but, but worry about infections and all that stuff mm -hmm. is, is, is actually not true. If you go to the right center and also if you have the right training. Right, I just wanna, comment on that training because the biggest thing I learned and I think it was one of the most important things in the mm -hmm. training I now look back at that was after you do uh, you've done the dialysis and you woke up in the morning in my training it was so emphasized every single day you would look at what was removed right. uh, during the night while you slept and I was told and I religiously put the bag on top of the LA Times every single day and that was the number one way to make sure you never got infection. Every single morning, if you could read a line from the LA Times with the bag on top of it, you were fine. And I found that the most accurate testing that I learned because that's the thing people are yeah. the most afraid of. Right. And it, right. I mean, it worked perfectly. Just learning those little tricks. Right. I mean, now that, you know, Sue and I have been through that and other people have been through that, I mean, that's so important to have a community of people that you can share the information with right. and you can talk to. Yeah. I mean, that's why you know we're here today because right. we were the people who are actually doing it. You right. teach it, but you've never done it. Right, and that's a very big difference because yes. I'm not on dialysis myself, right. and I've never been on that. So, so there's no, and and that's the whole base of circle of core, you know, the yes. core kidney program. Yes. So, and I know Mary Beth, you and Sue, you both of you have have provide a lot of support to patients. So if you if you want to, to talk to Mary Beth um, and Sue, just email us at Core Kidney mm -hmm. and we will connect you with, with, mm -hmm. with right. either one because of them. I think that's one of the most important things when I see these webinars, all of these webinars yeah. being done. I keep thinking, I wish I had known about the webinars because there's nothing like talking to someone who's facing right. end stage, who made the right. decision who can help you have a better understanding of things that, I mean, it, on the slide, Dr. Rostogi really showed the machine. When you actually see the machine, you realize if you can work an iPhone, yeah. they have the iPhone technology down with that thing. That's, I mean, yeah. you, you, it, it, it isn't like it's this complicated no. machine like you would see in center. Right. I mean, that thing no. looks really scary. Right. This is... Uh, something simpler but you know we're doing this and there's a whole team of people at ucla uh that have had treatments that are available to talk to you about anything right any and, question and i think maybe you have stretched it over again sue you have done that too and you actually provide that information yes. you do the teaching now you, you teach <laughs> you other do the patients training. yeah That's you true. do the training um and we'll have a different separate program on pd training as well you know we'll be going on the details uh, today because of time we, we can't do that but i think that the key thing is you're not alone i mean and a lot of people think oh my god i'll be at home there's 24 24 7 support over there you have other people that you can talk to your, your nurse your physician so there's a lot of support and if you don't feel comfortable you can always go back to in center mm -hmm. so but none of my patients ever done that and then once they've gone on home dialysis they don't want to go back to in center correct and i was just going to add one thing, I don't know, Sue, if you found this, because you know much more you're a nurse than I did, that one time in four and a half years, I tried to convince myself it, I was having a problem with the machine. The machine never had a problem. It was always something that yeah. I had done or I hadn't plugged in right, yeah. that with the support when you yeah. call up, I can't right. emphasize knowing that uh, a question in the three o'clock in the morning because a buzzer is going off because you didn't press a button, it's such. It was so comforting to know right. that I would have that. You'll have you have somebody you can yes. call and talk to. Yep, absolutely. So so I think uh, once again the the recurring theme is that if you're getting close to dialysis or are on dialysis, 
definitely ask the question, why aren't you on prenatal dialysis? And there are very few patients I could tell you that don't qualify for being on home dialysis. So, so speak to your nephrologist, speak to your healthcare providers, speak, sp uh, call us if you have any questions, and we can, and we, you can also talk to Mary Beth and Sue and other patients that we have to walk you through and see what the experience has been. Now, um, so as as a nurse, uh, you know, we talk about some of the advantages of patient dialysis. One of the biggest one, obviously, is you you, you spoke about the patient factors, the flexibility, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know seven days a week, so it's gentler on your body. Some patients actually do much lesser, depending on how much kidney. So when I say how much kidney function is left, so there's something called, so even though if you are on dialysis, we monitor your kidney still. And, and the more urine you make, you know, the better it is. So that's what we call residual kidney function or RRF. Um, so, so do you monitor that uh, on a regular basis on your PD patients? Yes, every three months. Okay. And I, th I think that's very important. So, 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 and that's important because we want to maintain the kidney function that's left, even though it might not be that much, it is still a significant number. And, and the reason why I bring this up is, as composed to a computer in center, PD preserves your kidney function for a much longer time. So that's the other advantage of being on, on peritoneal dialysis as opposed to hemodialysis, that, that it preserves the urine output that you're making for a much longer time. So uh, that's, if, you, if you're checking up points, why to be on PD. Now let's talk about transplant. And when I, I, when I discuss the options available for, for patients with advanced kidney disease, I mentioned those three things. There was always dialysis. Uh, we, uh, we spoke about palliative care. If, if in the opinion of your care team and you that you don't want to pursue any options, um, and then this palliative, making you comfortable. But, let, but let's talk about transplant. And, and in majority of cases, transplantation is the best option, but obviously you have to have somebody who can donate a kidney. Either you get on the, on the disease uh, donation list and there's a wait time for that, um, or if you have a living donor, you, you, can, you can do. But, but one thing that we have seen is, is if you look at our Century City PD program, we have a very high conversion rate for patients getting transplanted. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and there are a lot of reasons for that. But the way we look at and this is published data, that patients on peritoneal dialysis have, have a much better chance of getting a, a transplant than patients who are, are in center. There, there are a lot of reasons for that, but, but that is published data. But now both of you um, have a kidney transplant and, and you just celebrated your two years, so right, just June 10th. And, and for you, Mary Beth, it's going to be two and a half years right. very soon. Mm -hmm. So let me start with, with you, Mary Beth, first. T tell me your experience with transplant and, and the, and the, and the uh, transition from PD to, to having a kidney of your own. Yes. Well, um, I received um, the miracle of a transplant uh, two and a half years ago. And unfortunately, my husband, my sons, and my siblings, no one was a match for me. So I received from a deceased donor, a 29-year-old young man, a very healthy kidney. And because I think I was on PD, I look back on that, um, of, of exercising and seeing Dr. Rostogi regularly. And really, going into Century City, I, I never went in and saw you when you didn't ask me about what I was doing about the transplant. How proactive you were being. It was not, <clears throat> how's PD going? It was like, how's the transplant process going? So, you know, that was really, it was a whole team effort of giving me hope uh, with a hopeless situation where I received it. Really, in my transition, to be honest with you, it's amazing when you receive a transplant of a healthy kidney when you have tried to maintain your health right. by exercising right. and following right. all the plant. I mean, a day later, I felt like a new person and have been celebrating life in my kidney with um, a new energy. I feel 10 years younger. Where, where did you send me that picture from? Oh, I just, I showed, uh, I sent Dr. Rostogi a picture. I, I was just in Italy uh, hiking Cinque Terre, which is the five cities. I really wanted to do it at 45. 72 was not the ideal age, but hey, the new kidney, I could do it. <laughs> but what about that picture from Sydney? Oh yeah, send him a picture, picture That from was Sydney. right after the transplant. That's right, after the transplant, yeah. I climbed the Sydney, over the top of the Sydney Bridge, 
which was uh, quite an experience. Quite <laughs> and he sent me a picture from the top of the city with, with Bill. Saying, yeah. yes. Send that out to all the people who think this can never happen. <laughs> yeah. And I, th I think maybe what, what you also mentioned was that you took care of yourself while yes. on dialysis. You never gave up hope. Right. You were exercising, listening, taking your medications yes. on peritonitis. So like I said, it's like a bridge to right. transplant. Yes. So, so I look at it as, as a short term. And for some patients, it might be a long term. We have a patient for a very long time. But for patients who are interested in transplant, I would definitely go with PD. That's the, one of the other things. And, and so you have a transplant this is two years now yes, and two years. very good and, and looks like everything is going very well and you're educating pe other people about about transplantation as well mm -hmm. yeah and I, I think that that's you know you mentioned and I make it a point every time you came both of you came for and I know you, you want to share that story how you got that call my call came in on June 8th on a Thursday afternoon June 8th when I was having a clinic visit with Dr. Rastogi <laughs> And um, we were about to finish our clinic visit, yeah. and Dr. Rostoyu was had to run to a meeting, yeah. but I made a late first meeting because I received my phone call. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got a phone call, and then then you weren't going to answer it, and I said you should answer it, and and you did because this was actually during the meeting, right? This was actually, uh, and uh, everything else is history, you know. And uh, mm -hmm. and I got to know your brother very well, David, who was very involved, and and so it was all very good, all great, and and. You mentioned about travel, right? Yes. yes. Uh, so, t you know, yes. well, you're a world traveler. Right. That, that's the one thing that I really uh, learned at Century City from Dr. Astogi. Not only did he encourage working is great, yeah. like, oh, you have this disease, you need yeah. to do this. You need to keep working. And I remember the first time I talked to him, I mean, within a week of being on PD, I said to him, I really want to go to Boston. And he looked at me, and I'm just starting PD. He goes, yeah, I think there are really a lot of good doctors in Boston <laughs> if you need one of them. But, you know, I learned how to um, travel and how to have things delivered and how to take the machine and just decide, you know, there's the attitude of I'm going to lock myself in the house because I have kidney disease, I'm not going to go anyplace. And, you know, certainly you had to be cautious and planned, but it's doable. Right. You can do it. It's just a matter of right. making up your mind you're going to do it. And and I think so going back to so, so we discussed that and, and uh, you know, your husband was very involved with that as well. And you actually wrote some, some protocols how to travel. Um, right. yes. to getting through the screening at the airports and stuff and they say, What is this machine that you're traveling Absolutely. with? Um, Absolutely. and we're gonna share that actually this will be very nice for one of our future programs. Yes. We will do a lot on P D yes. is how to travel. And one thing that, that I always tell my patients, so the things that when you go for your visit to your nephrologist, your monthly visit, or or when you see them in center, is definitely we always talk about transplant because how we can help, right? Mm -hmm. Going to the right centers, looking for living donors, going to school or having a full-time job, mm -hmm. very important. And we really want you to have either one of them. You went to school, full-time school, nursing school, very st Stressful, stressful. Yes. and and you had a very stressful job too, Mary Beth. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I know what you did, and 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 so, but they did that, and and did it very well. So, so that, and the other thing is uh, enjoy life, and and mm -hmm. and don't be a victim. And I, and I did no better two people than you to say that it's it's don't don't let the disease defeat you, right? Mm -hmm. You're all about hope, about being positive, about traveling. I mean, you have traveled so much, and it's very good. Uh, but like you said. There should be a plan, and, and we can help you with that. I mean, we can you can get in touch with Mary Beth or Sue and, and see there is, you know, a proper way. And once you have it down, just like any training, yes. it's traveling. And now with a transplant, you're traveling, you know, just came back from Italy. And, and uh, so I think mm -hmm. all those things are, are very, very important. Right. And, uh, and, and, and I was just going to add, like, to uh, Dr. Stogie to realize all the resources right. there are for anyone suffering um, with kidney disease. There are so many people uh, as part of UCLA. They're called the Circle of the Core. Right. It's a group of people that each of us had, has had a very different experience, right. but they're all really available for any kind of questions right. related to kidney disease. And it's so great to have that kind of support to pe talk to real people who have gone through the actual process and mm -hmm. everything from, you know, all of the seminars that you're that right. you're offering to listen to those because there's so much really good information on them. Yeah, and, and I just want to bring up the circle of core. So the circle of core is actually a group of patients, UCLA patients who have gotten together to support the core kidney program. Mm -hmm. uh, and they come from all walks of life. Mm -hmm. Some 
are on dialysis, some are on transplant, some in center, some home, some have ADPKD, mm -hmm. some are on clinical trials. So if you ever need to talk to any of the patients or support group, please email us and we'll connect. And I know Mary Beth, you have given advice about home dialysis, and so you obviously are a PD nurse, but about right. transplant, mm -hmm. about what, and you were also on, on one of my clinical trials. Right. Um, right. So, I mean, two amazing people. I mean, I, I just can't thank both of you for doing all that you have done and, and just, you know, helping other people when they, I mean, it's, it's, it's very comforting when you speak to other person who is in a similar situation or was, mm -hmm. and they know there's hope right. and it's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that's, that's very important. And both of you ha are a living example, how to give back to society mm -hmm. and the clinical trial too. You know, I do a lot of studies um, and uh, I, oh, they, they ask me, so, you know, one of the questions that sometimes I get asked, not often, and you never ask that question, but you just said, where do I sign? And I said, no, 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 not that fast, Mary Beth. Let's go over the informed consent. Let's go over all the, you know, uh, and but I, said, I need to go and work and I'm, I'm, I will run out. So so I held you down and, and we went over that. Yeah. But but so what is in a clinical trial? And, and there are a lot of things, but number one is obviously the hope is that is a better option. You know, that's not available. It's, it's uh, the care you'll get, you get a much better care. And then also giving back to society. And I, I think both of you have given back in the clinical trials, how we advance medicine. So we have a lot of trials going on at UCLA as well. So if you're ever interested. But um, with with that, I think, um, Sue, anything you want to add before we, and we'll be following up on a lot of stuff that we discussed today and a lot more. Um, and like like I said, we, we this is our contact information. If you want to talk to Mary Beth, Sue, me, or our support team, Joe, you know, come and visit us if we can help in any way, either for home dialysis or for transplantation. But any any passing you know, ending comments you want, uh, Sue? Not at the moment. Not at the moment. I can't okay. think of anything right now. Okay. If you think, just let me know. And Mary Beth? Um, I was just going to say that, um, you know, that the the team and uh, the um, this the uh, program at UCLA. I think that, as Dr. Rostogi has said, really going and visiting a center, because we're all panicked when we right. get the diagnosis and you right. want to find, oh, this place looks close, right. and it's a hard thing to do, but I think it's really important because these people are going to be your lifeline. That's going to be your it's, team. Yeah. That's your team, and you have, to, you have to really trust the team and feel comfortable and confident that you're getting the best level of care that you possibly can for yourself because it's right in your neighborhood. Right. I mean, it's right in your neighborhood, so that's right. what I would advise you. Right, yeah. Thank you, and remember, you have these, these green ribbons. Yes, we have our green pins on, yeah. and we have a, uh, a uh, one of Dr. Rostogi's patients right. really started this green campaign because March is Kitty Month, right. and we came up with the green, and so it's great that people are wearing these green ribbons, and they'll ask us, what is this? What is this for? Right. And you realize when you look at the statistical number right. of the amount of people who have kidney disease, right. it's really staggering. And we wanted to get the kind of attention it really should get. Right. And, and both of you have been this kidney disease awareness. So it's called the Green Ribbon Campaign. Mm -hmm. You know, pink, pink ribbon is for breast cancer. Right. There are other ones too. So green ribbon is and UCLA is at the forefront of the, of the kidney disease awareness and the core kidney program. So with that, I want to thank you both. Thank you very, very much for all that you have done and obviously a lot more to do. You know, we are, we are far, far away from our, our goal to actually cure kidney disease. So I, I control it. So and I know at some point, we likely have a control over, over, over kidney disease. So thank you. So thank you, Mary Beth, very much. And then I just want to thank everybody um, this is our contact information. We have other webinars, um, uh, both at UCLA Health and on YouTube. Uh, there's one on pressure dialysis as well, another one. Uh, we have on hypertension, we have on, on kidney disease in general. So please uh, watch them, send us our comments, um, and, and we hopefully will incorporate. We'll do one, another PD program uh, in a couple of months, which we'll be discussing more about the training, uh, what you need to do. But with that, thank you very much uh, for attending this, and, uh, and we'll see you soon at our next webinar. Thank you very much. And thank you, Mary Beth. Thank you, Sue.